All right, so in this chapter, we're seeing Inumaki show up at the end using his curse technique, curse speech, to freeze Sukuna as Gojo, who is actually now Yuta, is going to fire off a hollow purple at him, which may or may not kill him. We'll see what happens, and we'll talk about that extended sequence, of course. But coming off of the previous chapter, we saw that Yuta inside of Gojo had like this domain clash with Sukuna, where they're both biting inside of their domains, which are closed, or at least uh, Yuta's is. And that's kind of like where the cliffhanger was for about three weeks now. And when we're coming back in, we're essentially getting a time update, I guess, because it says there's only three minutes left. Meaning that I guess we've gone through two minutes at this point, considering that a Kotsu's technique only lasts for five minutes. His copy ability, which he's currently copying Kenjaku's to inhabit Gojo's body. So it's also being mentioned here that Rika doesn't come with a Kotsu when he is in Gojo's body for some reason. And that was also like a part of the cliffhanger from the previous chapter. We saw Rika still manifested like crying, holding a Kotsu body and we had some wild theories of course like is gojo's brain in there is rika gonna bring gojo back still remains to be seen probably not but rika is definitely going to do something for sure she's also in the very beginning of this chapter too we see her still holding a kotsu crying and the fact that they're mentioning if he can even still use copy abilities on top of being in gojo and using limitless because Apparently that's not possible, which is interesting because I think that like if Kenjaku, I don't know where to do this or something, he would still in theory have access to his curse techniques, right? So why doesn't Akotsu have access to copy on top of having Limitless inside of Gojo's body? I guess it would ultimately just be too broken. Right, because if he had limitless and copy and then he can use all of his copied abilities, then he's just unstoppable. So it's still a possibility, I guess, that that could happen if Rika eventually shows up, uh, which I'm pretty sure that she will one way or another. Also, speaking of Akotu using limitless here inside of Gojo's body, it's also being pointed out that it's extremely difficult. Like on top of us getting the confirmation, which I think came out years ago, that like you can't use Limitless without having the six eyes. It was also, I think, confirmed uh, two chapters ago or something when they were going over swapping the bodies between Akotsu and Gojo. And he's just realizing now that it's like, yeah, incredibly difficult to use, kind of uh, paralleling it to like a high-end sports car, which are, uh, you know, kind of difficult to drive, I suppose, especially at fast speeds. Or they're just more powerful than what you would think, so that, you know, you have to have better handling. Also, we're seeing that a Gozu is having difficulty not just using Limitless and, you know, trying to maintain the techniques and whatnot, but Gojo's body is also, like, uh, difficult to use because it's longer than a Kotsu's. I think it said that Gojo's like six foot five or something, or six foot three, I'm pretty sure is his height. I'm not sure how tall a Kotsu is, but he's not as uh, big as Gojo. So that's a f interesting factor that Gege is pointing out here. So as they're continuing to fight, uh, Sukuna starts to wonder himself, like, oh, can he use copy on top of being inside of Gojo's body? Also, I guess he's confirming here from what he heard from Kenjaku about the copy ability that uh, Kotsu has that apparently like it's a requirement for copying is having Rika ingest a part of their body or something, the person uh, technique that they're copying. But first, let's talk about the sponsor of this video, Hofsko, because I just picked up their Hav Alpha 26 inch electric fat tire bike. And this thing is absolutely incredible. It's probably my favorite possession. Just looking at it, it's incredibly aesthetic, but it also has a 1300 watt motor with a high capacity integrated battery that gives you a range of up to 80 miles 
miles per charge. It also has a max speed of 28 miles per hour, as well as a 450 pound payload capacity, along with an intuitive LCD digital panel, front suspension, hydraulic disc brakes, a Shimano seven speed shifter, a headlight and a tail light, as well as a solid aluminum crank set. It also has this really cool thumb throttle that allows you to just cruise without having to pedal. Like I said, this thing is incredible. I feel so safe on the road with it and it's so powerful. It easily blasts through hills and incline and goes through rough terrain and the forest like it's nothing. That's one of the main reasons why I wanted to get it because it's kind of difficult to go through trails and unpaved roads with traditional bikes. I also don't own a car considering that I live downtown in the city. I don't have to deal with like car insurance and parking and mechanics and any of that stuff. You just get around no problem with this bad boy. So guys, you can get your very own Hav Alpha 26 inch electric fat tire bike by checking the link in the description. Thanks guys. I mean, it, I guess it's still not even being fully uh, confirmed here because he says like, oh, most likely that's the condition for it. But um, I, I guess that's what it has to be, right? To some extent, because that's all of the clues that we've seen up until this point and that could also come back into play too if rika shows up again we just see her in real time activate the conditions to copy an ability whatever ability she copies uh, you know at that point hypothetically also sakuna starts wondering about like what happens once the activation time of copy is done and he doesn't know that it's like five minutes that a kotsu could do it he just knows that there is a time limit which really helps them out because if sakuna knew the time then he would just you know fight around them and use that to his advantage and he's also wondering like okay once that time is up is he still going to maintain a gojo's body or is Kenjaku's technique gonna come to an end? And then like, what happens? Does he die? Does he just stay like that? Which is like the big question we've had for the last two chapters, but now Sukuna is pondering it himself. I guess just keeping that notion fresh in the audience's mind. And also this sequence too of Sukuna just uh, having like an entire page dedicated to his internal monologue is very Hunter Hunter if uh, the chapters haven't been even more so lately. So after a quick flashback of uh, Gojo talking to Akotsu and the other second year students, we come back to the real time and Akotsu has essentially decided that he has to hit Sukuna with Hollow Purple because earlier on in this uh, chapter, he realizes that Sukuna can only fight back against him using domain amplification which was like the another big aspect of the previous chapter. It's that Sukuna can use his domain expansion while also using domain amplification, which is like, I don't know, kind of breaks Gege's rules in a way, but I guess it does only cut off your curse technique and it doesn't cut off your domain expansion since I guess that is an entirely different thing. But with the domain amplification, he's able to get past Limitless and just, you know, hit and make contact with uh, Yuta and Gojo's body because otherwise he wouldn't be able to. But also because he's missing his two arms, he's unable to use his world cutting slash, which is like essentially how he killed Gojo in the first place. But since he can't use the hand seals and the chance at the moment, he can't activate the ability. So at this point, Akotsu's like, okay, I'll just kill him with hollow purple, which is easier said than done because, you know, like we've been seeing in this chapter, Akotsu's having a difficult time controlling Gojo's body. So activating his ultimate ability, you know, combining blue and red, the two aspects of Limitless, when you either enhance them with cursed energy or use reverse cursed energy combine those together and you get purple on top of that he has to do like chants and stuff like if that's how akotsu is able to activate it at this point but sakuna is aware of that because he's obviously fought gojo before and he knows okay so i'm not just gonna let you do these chants and the hand sign that you need to do to activate hollow purple so he grabs his hands and stops him from moving but that's when akotsu like pulls this tape recorder 
in the domain. I guess he had it with him or something. Because remember, they're inside of their domain expansions right now. So no one else can really get in. So he has this like tape recorder that he, I guess pulls out with blue, which is like the vacuum aspect of Limitless. And on the tape recorder is Inumaki's voice. And Inumaki is like struggling, like he's bleeding through his mouth and everything. But he's able to activate cursed speech through the tape recorder which I guess is getting through the domain expansion because otherwise Inomaki wouldn't be able to be in there. And Sukuna hears it and he freezes. And I guess Inomaki is struggling so much and it's so taxizing on him because it's Sukuna. Like, I guess the more powerful the person is that you're trying to use cursed speech on, the more it takes out of you, possibly. Because this is by far the strongest person we've seen him use cursed speech on. But now that it's worked, Sukuna cannot move. And now he's essentially just going to get hit by Hollow Purple. And in theory, this would kill him. Now, obviously, it's not going to be that easy because, you know, Yuji probably has to defeat Sukuna in the end. But this could be payback for Inumaki because Sukuna did take his arm during the Shibuya arc. You know, when he had that big massacre, you know, activating a malevolent shrine in the city. So maybe instead of just completely killing Sukuna here, the Hollow Purple... I don't know, winds up taking off his other arms. Like maybe that goes into a Kotsu having difficulty using Gojo's body. Like he can't just perfectly aim the hollow purple or something. Or I don't know, a Sukuna is able to like brute force through the cursed speech and just move a little bit so that it only takes his arms off. So then he would just have four like, you know, damaged arms with no hands essentially. And then uh, I guess he would still be able to fight back at that point, but also goes back into me saying what I've said before in a couple of these reviews is that they could have just had Inumaki come in immediately, use Cursed Speech on Sukuna, and then have Toto warp in Higuruma and then just stab him with the Executioner's Sword. It would instantly be over. Like, they wouldn't have had to have so many casualties here. Gojo still could have been alive, but I digress. That's where the chapter ends. Let me know in the comments what you think is going on with this. And if you like the video, guys, please leave a like and please subscribe if you haven't already. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.